evolutionary paper generation and decision support. From automated paper generator to a digital decision support product. First of all, we will look at an automated paper generator, how papers can be generated automatically with uh, it does not say that the scientific result is generated by the paper it just supports you in creating the wording of a logical structure of the paper the next thing is to integrate this digital product into a decision support system SciGen is an automatic paper generator developed by the MIT with the context free grammar for every start of the Perl script, you get a new paper. The title is different, the figures are different, the literature reference is different. Within minutes after you enter the author's name uh, and press enter, the SciGen will generate a paper for you. The paper will look like this. Now let's have a closer look on the paper. The title is generally uh, randomly generated. They have an abstract introduction. You have formulas in there. Uh, it describes an architecture of an IT setting. The figures are randomly generated. The data for the figures on the right side, they are randomly generated. This um, flowchart is randomly generated. The results are randomly generated. The related work and citations uh, are randomly generated and the references are randomly generated by uh, arbitrary author names, uh, initials and the, at least also the journal uh, is randomly combined with uh, first names and uh, titles for for the papers. So if you will check at least one reference you will see immediately that the papers do not exist. What is the purpose of these random papers? We have that model in computer science that you have a hacker attack on a network and the network security measures want to detect this intrusion. If we transfer that to the scientific community, the scientific community is a network, the random paper is a hacker attack, and um, the purpose of this paper was to, if the scientific community uh, detects that these papers are random papers and not scientific papers um, as they generally submit it. Um, a scientist uh, used the SciGen paper generator and submitted uh, a random paper to a conference and the conference accepted uh, the paper um, and after the acceptance the scientist uh, reported back that it's a random paper and it should not be accepted. They were honest in a way that they communicated uh, the random paper generator but at least this case was documented on the SciGen webpage. Now I asked myself can we use that for a different purpose? The idea was to support scientists in creating a paper and the paper will be defined by the context-free grammar and the context-free grammar will be a digital product that is a description of the research result and this digital product can be used for spatial decision support. The big benefit is that the scientific results can be immediately used in the decision support system. This is done to reduce the time span between publication of the results and the integration in the public health risk mitigation strategies. The benefit for the scientist is that he or she can optimize their publication procedures. One requirement is that uh, there is a transparent use of the paper generator and the, um, the grammar that produced the paper or the first version of the paper should be communicated uh, with the other scientists. The first thing which uh, has to be done is moving from a, a random paper generator like SciGen, which is used to test the scientific community, to a productive system that operates on grammar and could produce uh, and support scientists for uh, the paper generation. To replace the context-free grammar by a context-dependent grammar, uh, we get more flexibility in uh, defining the paper structure. The SciGen Perl script run from a command line is replaced by a JavaScript uh, paper generator 
that is able to be more flexible and to design the user interface and to be more convenient for the prospective user. But it's just a proof of concept so far. A final paper generator will have the following structure. As an input, you have a seed document for the paper defining the scientific results based on the previous scientific results. Furthermore, you have a BibTag database as an input, uh, which contains all the reference and literature you have read prior to the paper generation. And you um, enter an experimental design info uh, where you collected your data and you need at least a grammar that's specific to the journal you want to publish in. Data you ha might have collected will be fed into a statistical package like uh, open source R and um, the whole system will generate a LaTeX document, will uh, look into the BibTeX database and select the BibTeX records according to your uh, keywords in the paper seed document and then you, this will create figures and diagrams with a statistical package and will identify, for example, missing definitions that um, need to be inserted in the document and that are not uh, available at the moment. So you take an existing grammar representing 90% uh, of the currently um, available knowledge about a certain subject you add 10% workload to it and uh, deliver a new results in a specific scientific field, for example, that contributes to public health risk mitigation. And then you generate the scientific paper. This is an iterative process. You add workload, improve the scientific knowledge, add more scientific knowledge to it and create another digital product usable for decision making and this is going back and forth so that scientific results can immediately integrate it in decision making processes. Even if the journals keep the copyright of the papers, it makes sense that the digital products uh, have uh, an open source, open content license so that they can use for public health decision making and risk mitigation. I discussed the concept of paper generation with other um, scientists and I want to give some final remarks on that. A paper generator is not a press a button tool where you quickly create 20 papers, submit them and uh, you add them to your CV. It will not replace thinking about the scientific results, structuring the scientific results and base it on existing scientific results. Most of the time I ask the questions, would you add a note at the end of the paper that you used the paper generator for your publication? And I will not repeat the answers, but there's the only option we have is transparency. So if you use paper generation, mention them and provide the grammar structure for the for the document to the scientific community so that they can build on that or use it for decision support systems thank you for listening and i hope we have some small pilots in the future for seeing papers as digital decision support products